I'll use these universal crimpers to demonstrate the procedure to connect two number 14 wires using a butt splice. If you use better quality butt splices, odds are good that you'll have a quality splice. You can find better quality butt splices at a local electrical supply house. The insulated ones are color coded, but there's not a standard used by all manufacturers. Red is usually 22 to 18 gauge wire, but sometimes 16 gauge wires is accepted. Blue is usually 16 to 14 gauge wire, though sometimes 18 gauge wire is accepted. Yellow is usually 12 to 10 gauge wire, though 14 gauge wire is also sometimes accepted. The wire gauges that are compatible with the connector are often printed on it. Some are insulated and have heat shrink on the ends. And some are non-insulated. There are more expensive crimping tools. This one costs about $50. The ratcheting type can cost hundreds of dollars. Often manufacturers will list a specific crimping tool to be used with a specific model of butt splice. The wire size is often printed on the cable's jacket. Printed on this jacket is 18 AWG. The AWG stands for American Wire Gauge. The goal is to strip the wire back so that the bare copper is fully filling each pocket and the insulation of the wire is up against the metal barrel. This flare on the edge of the butt splice is meant to support the wire. You'll close the crimping tool down on the center of each one of these barrels. The cutters and the strippers on this tool are not very good. If you use them, you'll struggle to get a clean cut and to properly strip the insulation off of the wire. I prefer this kind. They'll make a clean cut and they won't damage the wire strands. Notice that the strippers say solid on the left side and stranded on the right side. And a solid number 10 wire it's the same gauge as a stranded number 12 wire. Ensure that the wire end has a clean cut. Then strip it back to the correct length. There shouldn't be any strands of wire left behind in the covering. Some people tell you to twist the end of the wire. If you think about it, if you were to touch a shiny piece of copper with your fingers, you'll leave a fingerprint behind, and that fingerprint will corrode, so I don't think that you would want to do that on the end of your wire. The twist on the wire should be the same as it was made from the factory, you shouldn't have any overlapping strands, and you don't want any kind of nicks. The length looks good. Slide the wire into the connector. Use the opening on the tool that matches the size wire and the size of the connector that you'll be crimping. So we'll be using the blue 16 to 14 gauge opening. Close the crimpers on the center between this middle indicator and the flare on the insulation. If you give a firm tug between the wire and the connector, they should not come apart. 
repeat this process for the other side of the connector and there's the completed splice give it a tug if your butt splice is not the type that is heat shrinkable and you want to seal uh, moisture out you can slide a piece of shrink wrap over it and seal it off that way I hope you found this video helpful a thumbs up is always appreciated click on the channel name know how now to find other videos and thanks for watching